The National Institute of Standards and Technologies asked Dr. Krauts to give a short presentation about provenance, authentication, and our solution call, SEAL. Well, they actually asked for a talk about Vita, but Vita was renamed to SEAL. It's the same project, just with a new name. This is an updated version of the presentation that Dr. Krauts provided to the NIST workshop on September 11, 2024. I'm going to go over the problem space, how email solve these issues, and how SEAL extends email's solution. The original presentation only focused on SEAL. Because the first question from the NIST workshop asked us to compare SEAL with another solution called C2PA, we'll also be including a brief comparison in the survivor's presentation. Neil Krauts's company is called Hacker Factor, and he develops computer forensic software. I'm Chutney. Neil's computer. I'll be doing the talking because Neil has a face for radio and a voice for books. Together, we run a variety of online forensic-oriented services. It's from these public services that we've gained an understanding of how people conduct online fraud. When we talk about online fraud, people usually think about news outlets and digital alterations. But the problem is so much bigger than that. There's insurance fraud, banking fraud, fake injury claims, proof of life, proof of death. You know, because if you're going to pay the hit man, you want to make sure he really did the hit. There's propaganda, political influence, medical reports, scientific research, courtroom evidence, and much more. And it's not just the different industries. There are also different techniques. Simple fakes, advanced fakes, deep fakes, altered images, staged photos, misrepresented pictures, and the list goes on. Everybody wants a one-button solution. A quick yes-no, real fake litmus test. The problem is, it's usually more complicated than that. Many digital cameras automatically enhance photos. Maybe the picture was a little altered, but still represents the contents. Maybe the picture is real, but the metadata was changed. Or maybe one area in the picture was altered, but you only care about another area. This problem is much more complicated than a simple yes-no reply. Some aspects may be real. Some alterations may be unintentional. And some edits may be harmless. But what if we could authoritatively validate something? There are a couple of different approaches for this problem space. Tools like our photo forensic service focus on provenance. They help determine how a file was created and handled. While metadata is a start, it cannot always be trusted since metadata can be easily altered, removed, or replaced. For this reason, photo forensics combines metadata analysis with deterministic and provable file and content analysis. SEAL relies on public key cryptography. It doesn't tell you about the content. And any metadata that identifies the eye is taken at face value. This is the same trust-based issue found in every metadata-only solution. Instead, SEAL works like a notary. It can tell you if the content was changed after signing and its cryptographically enforced identity model prevents impersonations and false attributions. And then there's C2PA. They claim it provides provenance and authentication. That's the P and A in the name but they have yet to provide any examples with reliable provenance or unimpeachable authentication. The basic problem is that C2PA is based on trust in the honor system. Just consider this picture of a car. Is it real or AI? Was it digitally altered? What if this photo was used as courtroom evidence? Is part of an insurance claim? Denotes terrorist activity? Or offers proof of a war crime? What if this is a really important photo? Using the public photo forensic service, we can see that it isn't from a camera. It's either AI or significantly altered. The commercial photo forensic service has more tools. With this analyzer, bright reds and whites denote AI. This is an AI-generated image. But most solutions just rely on the metadata. In this case, there's an IPTC field that says, train algorithmic media. This is defined as media created using a model derived from sampled content. In other words, this is AI. That IPTC label was created and inserted by someone. But we don't know who. The label is as trustworthy as the person who inserted it. Maybe it's legitimate, or maybe it's wrong. However, this is how metadata-only solutions identify that something is AI. They assume that the label is accurate. Unfortunately, we cannot tell if the media is correctly labeled, unintentionally mislabeled, or intentionally misleading. The problem isn't just with IPTC labels. 
it's with any metadata field. This AI generated forgery includes fake metadata. Any solution that only evaluates metadata will incorrectly report the camera, time, location, and attribution information. Metadata stores information, but it doesn't say where it came from. If you trust the metadata, then you don't need complex cryptography because you'll already trust the data. And strong cryptography over untrusted metadata doesn't make it more trustworthy. But we can do better by thinking about how attackers operate. They either attack the content by changing metadata or altering the picture. Or they attack the narrative with false attributions, supplying fake cover stories, staging photos, disavowing content that they really did create, and so on. Fortunately, there is a solution that can address some of these issues. As it turns out, email has had these same problems for years. Email was never designed for security. And it's based on trust. If the sender says it's from Alice, then we assume it's from Alice. This trust enables a whole host of problems. Different kinds of spam. Content from unknown senders. And my personal favorite, emails from Nigerian princes. Over 35 years after email was created, someone found a solution, DKIM. Domain keys. The idea is simple, the sender has a public and private key pair. The private key signs the email, while the public key is stored in DNS. The recipient compares the email signature against the public key in DNS. This approach validates the sender. It prevents unauthorized changes because the signature won't match. It stops impersonations because they don't have your private key from your mail server. If there is no signature, then the recipient's mail server either rejects it as spam or marks it as untrusted. And it even handles non-repudiation. A valid signature means that you sent that email because only you have the private key. You can't disavow an email that you really did send. DKIM is so ubiquitous that your mail server is probably doing it right now. And you don't even realize it. Here's an example email with the raw header showing a DKIM signature at the top. It identifies the signed header fields and the domain name containing the public key. This needs to match the sender. If I look up the DNS entry, I can see the public key. The cryptographic signature gets compared against the header values. And it also checks the signature for the email's body. A signature match does not mean it's not spam. It means we know who the sender is, we know where it came from, and we know that nobody tampered with it. So that's how DKIM protects email. But why limit it to email? SEAL extends the exact same battle-tested solution to any kind of media. Pictures, videos, audio files, documents, whatever. Here's a picture with a signed SEAL record. There's the cryptographic signature. This is the byte range for generating the signed digest. In this case, it's from the start of the file to the start of the signature. And from the end of the signature to the end of the file. The SEAL signature covers the entire file. And it identifies the domain containing the public key. If we look up the domain, we can see multiple keys that use different algorithms. This seal record says to use the RSA key. To verify the signature, we check if the algorithm and public key decodes the signature into something that matches the computed digest. If it matches, then the file wasn't tampered with, and we know who signed it. Seal provides a tamper-proof solution for evidence handling. Both seal and DKAM stole the public key in DNS making it hard to alter or impersonate the signer. This is different from C2PA, which includes the public key in the file. That makes it easy for an attacker to replace a tamper with a public key. SEAL can associate the signature to a domain, host, or user. And it provides tamper detection, prevents false attribution, and enforces non-repudiation. In contrast, C2PA often doesn't identify the user responsible for the file. At best, C2PA provides an unverifiable signature from a large company like Microsoft or Adobe. It doesn't identify any users. And anything that identifies a user was placed in the metadata by some unknown user. That makes the metadata unverified and trivial to forge. Both SEAL and C2PA permits forwarding the media without alterations. And while SEAL supports appending signatures to streaming media, C2PA is just beginning to figure out a streaming solution, and their solution is format-specific. DKIM and SIL may address conflicting claims of ownership if the signed timestamp can resolve the issue. 
The C2PA cannot do this because any C2PA date information can be set by the unknown user. That makes it unverifiable. And most importantly, SEAL is compliant with the federal rules for evidence handling. This means that it can be used in a court of law. SEAL addresses potential deficiencies for provenance and authentication in evidence handling cases. C2PA cannot do this because all data and signatures are unverified and entrusted. Most of the threats against SEAL are already addressed. The only novel threat comes from DNS hijacking. What if an attacker hijacks your DNS? Well, they still cannot sign as you because they don't have your private key. They can revoke existing keys, so someone might see a revoked signature on a previously signed file. Or they can impersonate you by creating new keys and signing new media as you. But this doesn't impact existing signatures. The catch here is that all damage is temporary. A hijacked domain will be quickly noticed. Unauthorized revokes can be undone. And unauthorized keys can be revoked. SEAL is dependent on DNS for storing the public key. But what if you don't have a domain? Well, SEAL supports remote signers. You register an account with the signer. You send the digest to the signer and they return the signature. The signer never sees the content. It only sees the digest. That ensures privacy. This remote signer approach is compatible with users who authenticate using a CAC, PIV, or other two-factor device. Anyone can create a remote signer. We already made the first one. It's up and running. SEAL is lightweight and can easily be integrated into web browser extensions, mobile devices, or tiny embedded systems. Unlike C2PA, SEAL's keys are not time-based. This means that embedded devices do not need regular updates or ongoing, long-term vendor support for installing outdated keys. SEAL could also be used with device registration services, so users can use other cameras or phones without worrying about impersonations from the next owner. As far as the current status goes, the specifications for SEAL have been peer-reviewed and updated. The documentation is on GitHub along with some sample code. It is 100% public domain and patent-free, and the first remote signer has already been created. The next steps. We need to finish the client-side code. The biggest development limitation is that everyone is an unpaid volunteer. When the client code is ready, we'll publicly announce the remote signer and inform the handful of large companies that have voiced an interest in SEAL. Finally, we wouldn't mind working toward a formal standard, but we are more technical than political, so we'll definitely need help here. I briefly covered some of this system's capabilities and I didn't even dive into niche topics like privacy, vendor independence, compact design, low complexity, revocation secured by design, and a very small attack surface. Having said that, here's our contact information. On behalf of Neil Krowitz, we thank you for your time.